So, you know, as we have known for some time, reduce it is a trial of vesipa or vascular EPA, which is icosapentethyl, a highly purified preparation of, of uh, EPA uh, versus placebo in patients, you know, with already pre-existing cardiovascular disease or those with diabetes plus additional risk factors. And these are all patients that had well-controlled LDL. So the reduce it trial, which has been, you know, now out for several years, studied to look to see really what causes that persistent risk. Because we know that despite well-controlled LDLs, patients go on to have MIs and strokes and revascularization events. So what is the way that we can identify patients that are at higher risk? And that's where it found the triglycerides as a marker of risk. So these are patients with elevated triglycerides at or above 150 milligrams per deciliter, secondary prevention or high risk primary prevention. And they're randomized to, you know, IPE, icosapentethyl, uh, four grams a day versus placebo, which was the mineral oil placebo, and followed over time, looking at their major endpoints. Now, the parent trial was very interesting because it, it found a 25% reduction in the five-point mace with a number needed to treat of 21 and a 26% reduction in the three-point mace with a number needed to treat of 28. So a very, very positive trial. What was new this year and presented at the ACC was the, was the cohort from the parent trial that had had a recent MI. So the question, the clinical question here was, okay, is there more benefit in those patients that have had their MI within the last 12 months that have elevated triglycerides, uh, you know, and meet the criteria for enrollment into reduce it. And that's what that reduce it ACS study was. Yeah, so it was very interesting. I was actually very surprised to see the results because the risk reduction in this higher risk population was incredibly impressive. I mean, I thought the parent trial was impressive, but if you look at the relative risk reduction here, you see a 37% relative risk reduction in the five-point maze as opposed to 25% in the parent trial and a 36% relative risk reduction in the four-point maze. Now, of course, the same, same sort of safety signals and adverse events we saw in the parent trial also occurred here. Notably, there was a higher risk of atrial fibrillation in the treatment arm as opposed to the placebo. And that was, the difference was higher than we saw in the parent trial. So that recent ACS population that has had an MI within the last 12 months had a 7.4% risk of AFib if they got the active treatment arm, the icosapentethyl, versus 2.9% in the placebo arm. Now, interestingly, bleeding is obviously a concern when we use icosapentethyl. And in a recent ACS population, that was my question as a clinician, are these patients higher risk for bleeding? And the bleeding event rates really did appear similar to what they did in the parent trial uh, in terms of treatment and placebo. So very compelling data suggesting even a bigger bang for our buck in patients who've had a recent ACS, keeping a closer eye for atrial fibrillation, and then feeling reassured that we're not seeing a higher risk of signal for bleeding. You know, so I'm definitely going to start thinking about using icosapentethyl sort of earlier uh, in, in my clinical assessment and thinking about using it even during the acute coronary syndrome sort of evaluation phase. So during that first visit in the office or even perhaps in the hospital itself, just because we are seeing such impressive relative risk reductions with uh, respect to these hard endpoints. Now, keep in mind, this is a post hoc analysis. So it is slicing and dicing the data a little bit in terms of, you know, how we arrive at these conclusions, but certainly does suggest that the benefit is in the same direction. And it's a much larger benefit probably with a lower number needed to treat as well, uh, making me more likely to use it earlier upfront more aggressively, not necessarily just in my stable CAD population, but also in those with the recent acute coronary syndrome.